Today we're going to be talking about the Cartesian coordinate system, also known as the four quadrants. And to do that, we're going to talk about your friend and mine, Mr. René Descartes. Now, Mr. Descartes was a Frenchman alive in the 15th, 16th century. And one day he had nothing better to do than to look at a fly on the wall. And so he decided to himself, how can I describe this fly, the direction and coordinates of, my, of this fly to my friends? You really wish that it was a more mathier story than that, but no, it's, it's, it's really not. It's kind of boring that way. But anyway, so he decided to come up with a four-quadrant system. And through this re rectangular coordinate system, we can link this and study the problems of geometry and algebra together. So very important, the coordinate system, you have an x-axis and a y-axis. Always super important. Um, whenever you're talking about a coordinate on the four quadrants, you always, re always, always refer to it by the position of the x-coordinate and then the position of the y-coordinate. So anyway, let's talk about those coordinates. Um, the first quadrant is actually over here. Now things run counterclockwise because back in the 16th century, everything ran counterclockwise. It wasn't until the first polar meeting of the 1700s that things started to run clockwise and then everything started to make sense. Anyway, so here we go. First quadrant, first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. Now in the first quadrant, both your x value and your y value are positive. In the second quadrant, as you see over here, starting from this point over here, this is called the origin. Now at this point, it's zero, zero, everything's po er, well, everything has no positive or negative value. But as we move forward, we notice the numbers increase in value, so that's going to be an increase in positive values. This is going to be an increase in positive values. So then we can see why the first quadrant is positive, positive. In the second quadrant, we're still moving positive on the y, but negative on the x. So we could say that the x coordinate is negative and the y coordinate is positive. Then we get down to the infamous third quadrant. You know those days when you forgot your lunch, you forgot your lunch money, and your dog ate your homework, everything's just kind of negative? Yeah, that's the third quadrant. Over here, the x value is negative and the y value is negative. And then finally, we get into the fourth quadrant, where once again, we see our x value is positive and our y value is negative. So whenever you're thinking about where to place coordinates or when dealing with coordinate geometry or algebra, it's important to remember the value of the four quadrants.